Imagine a girl, four years old, playing with her seven other siblings, when suddenly everywhere is dark, the power is out, and there is a loud alarm. You can hear a message saying, the alarm you are hearing is the sound of red status, and it means there is a possibility of a bombing attack. Go to your underground shelter as fast as you can. She's scared at first, but then her dad grabs her and says, don't worry, this is just a game. Let's see who can get to underground shelter first. And she starts running with the rest of her family. Just like so many other kids around the world, she has no idea what war means. What she can see, though, it's so many families who are running away from her country. Her family doesn't want to leave because they want to stay together. No matter what the family decides, to go or to stay, the impact of war would be on their soul forever. That little four-year-old girl, just like so many other kids in the world under war, she misses so many opportunities, so many experiences, just because her whole childhood was spent in the war. And her family, first and most priority, was to save their lives. Let's go further in her life. Ten years pass. She's 14 years old now. The war is over, and the Islamic regime is in power. She's sitting in a car, wearing full hijab, covering her entire body in black, going to her first family trip to north of Iran, where Caspian Sea is. The word sea is unknown to her. She had seen some photos in her school book. On the way, Dad says, let's play a game. Who can see Caspian Sea first? She put her hands around her, her face, go closer to the car window, and keep looking until she can see the entire magical blue of the sea. She cannot wait to get out of the car and experience getting into the water. They finally arrive. She gets out of the car, and she sees a big sign from the government saying that the beaches are separated for men and women. Ladies' beach is in the other side of the city. As a young teenager, she doesn't want to separate from her family. So she has to wait at the beach. Her older brother, though, <laughs> takes off his clothes and jumps into the water. She realizes that she's not equal to her brother. Not really, not according to the government. She needs to learn that she cannot publicly swim, dance, sing a song, ride a bike, and so much more. Let's go even further in her life. More than 20 years pass. She's over 30 years old now. Left her country to study overseas. Destiny brought her to Tasmania, a little island in south of Australia. She's surrounded by water now. This place has so many beautiful beaches, and none of them has a sign telling her to separate from her family in order for her to swim. 
She can discover the underwater world or ocean as she wishes. But there is a problem. She cannot swim. She's like a newborn baby in a different world. On the way to Tasmania, she visited Malaysia, where she entered the deep side of the swimming pool for the first time in her life to try a scuba diving. For that, she didn't know how to swim. She still remembered that she was holding to the instructor hands with a mixed feeling of fear, excitement, and surprise. When they finished, the instructor looked into her eyes and said, you know what, scuba diving is not for everyone. She was really determined to prove him wrong because something deep down in, into her heart was telling her that scuba diving is going to be a great love of her life. Everyone in her new home of Tasmania seems like they have been born knowing how to swim. She's missing so much but not by not being able to swim because most of her friends' activities are in, around, or underwater. So she feels like in order for her to get involved with Australian culture, she needs to get involved with the water activities too. She starts learning to swim, but it's not as easy as she thought. At the time, there is no adult-only focused program for her to register. The cultural barrier and the Australian accent of most of the instructors make it even harder for a person who just arrived to Australia. She tries getting into diving industry, but it seems like there is mostly men in the industry, and she's facing discrimination and feeling not welcome. On top of that, she cannot afford the cost of the classes, and her brain is keep telling her to just focus on the visa and so many other issues a new migrant might have. But her heart is begging her to not to give up on her love for the ocean. She needs to find another way, and the final way that she comes across is to train herself. She starts watching YouTube videos <laughs> and doing land exercises <laughs> to train her brain to build up that muscle memory to do it in the water. And then asking her Australian friends, who seems like they have been born into the water, to take her swimming and give her some tips. That is when she is first introduced to underwater hockey and underwater rugby with her friends, Brett. She trains every day for the team. She gets the biggest bruises in her whole body, facing so much discrimination and fighting back by blocking her ears to the calls of, you know what, this is not for everyone. That four years old girl, that 14 years old teenager, that 30 years old newly arrived student is standing here in front of you at this stage today. She went into becoming a swimming instructor in 2017. She got certified as a scientific diver in 2018. She got selected as a national team player for Tasmanian underwater rugby team in 2019. She was selected as a Tasmanian master player for underwater hockey national team in 2020. She got her certificate as a scuba diver instructor and technical diver 
in 2021. And she got her boat license. Now, she's living on a beautiful sailing boat and learning how to sail in 2022. That's me, Nadia. Thank you. Recently, I started a program named From Zero to Hero to teach adult migrants and refugees how to swim and guide them step by step to get water confidence and water safety knowledge to improve their physical and mental health. In cooperation with local organization and, the, and with the fundraising effort, from Zero to Hero has taught more than 100 refugees and others who cannot afford the cost of the classes. Because I believe everyone deserves the opportunity to release their potential. Water safety knowledge should not be limited to those who can afford it. With the money I raise through fundraising, I sponsor people who cannot afford the cost of the classes. I put them in an ethical contract that later, when you have found a job, you are going to sponsor someone else to learn to swim. I call this an ethical contract of kindness. We are also running multicultural beach days to introduce Australian beach culture to new arrivals to Australia. Because I believe learning to swim, Australian beach culture, and water safety knowledge should be part of the welcoming package to new arrivals to our big island of Australia and our little island of Tasmania. The main message I try to deliver to my students is be the hero of your yesterday. And by that, I mean, I want them to get the confidence about themselves, physically and mentally, believing that there is no competition with no one else but with the person you were yesterday. Being in and around the water safely is a life lesson for me, and I think for everyone. If you have ever been in a swimming class, you know that the first thing they are teaching you is to be safe in case of emergency. So in case someone push you into the water, your brain knows what to do. You are not getting panic. You are not stressed. Your brain knows how to react. You might even laugh, you might even go deeper, you might see it as an opportunity to have fun, to go deeper, and show off on your abilities to manage that emergency situation. And I always tell my students that the same rule applies in the life outside the swimming pool. So if someone push you toward negative thoughts and negative experiences, that is a mental emergency. You, your brain needs to be ready to react in a safe way. You are not going to get angry. You are not getting surprised. You need to train every day how to react in a safe way for yourself and for your soul. These are the things that we are teaching in From Zero to Hero classes to my students. It's much more than learning to swim, but that is where we start. Now, I want you to imagine a Tasmania where everyone can enjoy the beauty of the beach without having the fear of the water. I am determined to see a year without anyone drowning 
as a case of, as a result of not having water safety knowledge. It might seem like a big dream, but I am determined to do my bit to make this dream come true. I want to be the change I want to see in the world. Because I believe future is not where we go, future is what we build. In an island, even like Tasmania, having water safety knowledge can save the life of thousand migrant families. And that same knowledge can help them to contribute, empowering them and getting them let involve in the society that they are calling home now. I want to make the basic water safety knowledge compulsory and complementary for, for all new arrivals to Tasmania. With that same knowledge, they can save themselves, save their family, and save the ocean for the next generation. Imagine the possibilities. Thank you.